it's that dreaded time of year. The end of year trashy clip show video. Or early next year trashy clip show video. <laughs> Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac, and welcome to the YouTube channel. This video is a yearly video that I make where we kind of do a retrospective over the last year. So if you're new here, this is not regular. If you're old here, you know the drill. The most popular video for 2023 was the video where I reviewed a bunch of board game miniatures, and that makes me so happy because 2023 was a lot of learning for me. And part of the learning was trying to figure out what makes a successful YouTube video. And I don't think that I will ever discover that. And I think the target is constantly moving. But that video was a huge risk because it took a ton of work to do. And there was a huge chance that it just wouldn't connect with my audience because my audience is largely miniature painters. They're not into board games, much less playing board games. And so I could have spent all those months playing those games and writing reviews for them and make that video to have like, you know, like nothing happen. It could have just like hit 50K views and then gone nowhere. But it's it's awesome that you guys liked that video, it resonated, and that I kind of broke outside of the subscriber base into a, a larger board game uh, viewership. And it was just cool. It was, it, was a, it was confirmation that how I was thinking about how YouTube works is how it works kind of. Of course, there are plenty of videos that you know confirm like the opposite of that, but um, that that was a, a good moment for sure, for sure. Generals gather at their messes. I want to start talking about the community in these videos because you guys do a lot of cool stuff, and whenever I see it, I think it's awesome, but I can't always remember it, and so in the next coming years, I'm going to collect to 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 throughout the year so I don't forget. But in this last year. Uh, we saw a couple cool things. Uh, someone from my Discord, Hub the Hobby Daddy, made a bunch of awesome stickers, Miniac stickers, also some Vince Venturella stickers, and he was handing them out at Adepticon, and he made some more this year as well, and that was, those are just cool. I love looking at those. Someone painted the Warrior Wood Elf, uh, and they replaced the daggers with lollipops. There's a feedback channel. Just ping me, and I will eventually respond to your respond to your your message. I don't get to them immediately all the time. Though. <laughs> it's one of those things where you want to hate it, but you can't because <laughs> it's just it just works so well. And I know there are other things that people in the community did uh, around the Miniac channel this past year, but I can't remember them. But definitely next year going forward, gonna do more of this stuff because uh, it's just so cool to see what you guys do. Just like witches have black mouth, I not know. All right, it's time. It's time for the angriest people on the internet. To get a little bit of the limelight, you know? Miniac, do you ever consider that you're no longer about painting, but rather brain dead gimmicks? I think the best part about this comment is that it's on the video that was the most popular from last year. It's on that board game review video, which doesn't mean that it's not a gimmick, you know, I get that. But that video took like six months of work. It was like, I don't know, like 200, 300 different shots, tons of writing. It was like 30 minutes long. It was like one of the hardest videos to make in that year. And so this person is just on a different plane of existence than me. And so I didn't know how to respond to this other than by hitting them with that Theoden quote, you know? No one can say no to Theoden. Why is your outro so horrendously loud and obnoxious? <laughs> Come on, man. God, this video is so anti-metal. It feels like the fakest phone in whatever's going on in the backstage of Miniac needs to stop. <laughs> Justin, the good old gatekeeper. He gets to decide what's metal and what's not. This is on the video where uh, me and all my friends were talking about post-escalation league and just about the armies we painted and, and what we learned throughout the process. I don't know what makes that anti-metal, but uh, oh man, this comment is so great. The best part about this comment is that this guy is like a regular viewer of my channel. I went and searched his username on my channel and he's like watched a lot of stuff and commented fairly frequently and said uh, a mixture of various nice comments and pretty mean comments and this one definitely takes the cake. I love this channel, I really do. I believe you. 
but I have to say something here, and frankly, I don't feel like agonizing over my phrasing to protect your feelings. Thank you, foul mouth. You are not Vince Venturella. You do not have to copy every thing this poor guy does. We all get it. You have a massive man crush on the guy. Can you move on from it and try being you instead of trying to be him? I don't think that Vince would disagree with this statement, but I think that his miniature painting channel and my miniature painting channel are probably one of the most different ones in our like vertical. Sure, there are probably some other ones that are even more different, but we have incredibly different presentations, styles, information we're trying to share. So like, I don't, again, different plane of existence. I don't know how some people can draw the conclusions they're drawing. This, this comment was on the video where I was talking about a game I wanted to make. And so I guess in that case, yes, we're similar. He makes games, I wanna make a game. I didn't know that because Vince was making a game. No one else was allowed to, my bad. I'll stop doing it, sorry. Forgot about that one. I've read these comments in a long time. Some person was being sarcastic and they were like, they're just minis guys, calm down. And I was like, who isn't calm? Because I always hate that. Whenever you're like, whenever you're like scrolling through like, uh, like Instagram reels and you see a comment that's like, man, all the haters here are like just losing their minds. And you kind of like leave through like 15, 20 comments and you see like no hate. So I, I wanted to kind of like poke at this guy a little bit. And then he said, it was a joke. I see humor isn't allowed here. Thought this was a cool channel. Apparently I was wrong. Oh well, just a few less videos to watch. No biggie. See ya officially unsubscribed. Apparently he isn't calm. <laughs> Bruh. I think the lack of punctuation really just emphasizes how not calm he is. <laughs> Instead of Patreon, how about going out and getting a real job and actually being of some use to society? <laughs> Dude, roasted. Oh my God, okay. Yeah, you know, he's right. I should get a real job. Paint job where most of it's just primer. I wish I could remember what video this was. That's always the worst criticism is when you like hand a model to someone and they're like, oh, is this done? And then a part of you just dies. This is like that, but like times a hundred. <laughs> I kind of, I really want to look this comment up. All right, I'm going to. I found it! It was the video where I painted the last Space Marine I'm ever gonna paint. And yeah, you know, I kind of get that. I don't want to say that's just heavy metal paint styles, but like the majority of a Space Marine model painted in heavy metal style is its base coat because it's largely just, you know, one color with a bunch of edge highlights. In that case, there was a lot of glazing and shading going on in the model, so whatever, but like I get where he's coming from. Oh, big comment, Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> This is, this can't be good for my, my mental health. You've embarrassed yourself here, Scott. Just the latest in a long line of clickbait videos with either poor or non-existent substance. You strayed so far from your original content, which was always purposeful and genuine. Possibly having been exposed to you more early through top podcast, it's become so clear that you are more interested in getting sponsorships and making this a money-making enterprise, which is fair enough, as you literally made it your business, but it's come at the cost of quality and authenticity of content. Poor quality, no substance, overscripted, dry videos over and over, unsubscribed. I feel like the videos I made in this past year were like firing on all cylinders, 90% bangers. There are, maybe there are a couple in there where I didn't like put in like the full ball sack, but I tried hard. But this person, Jamie, does not agree. Also, if I really cared about making a ton of money through sponsorships, I would work with people who aren't miniature painting companies. I think the last two years have been exclusively miniature painting sponsorships on my videos because it just feels like that works the best for the audience. If I wanted to make a ton of money, I would go with NordVPN and go with companies like Skillshare and stuff like that. So, you know, you know, you know, what do you know? I don't know. What a shit post. Waste of time. Just like this comment. Oh, <laughs> this was, <laughs> no, I forgot about this one. Uh, oh, Americans have children instead of, <laughs> I can't even get through it. Oh, Americans, have children instead of buying dogs. <laughs> As if not having kids and or having dogs is like a thing that can be criticized. Like, I don't, I don't even understand, man. I don't even understand. This world is so crazy. People in this world have crazy ideas of how it's supposed to work. It's insane. I love how every wargaming content creator thinks they need to educate the plebs on non-GW wargames. Only in your case, it's because you are salty as f 
and not that you actually care about these companies you could have been covering for years. Well, Jason Graves, this was obviously in response to my uh, Other Games April. That was really Other Games May for me because I just couldn't get a video out in April for some reason. I can't actually remember why, but I got four videos out in May that were all uh, indie brands. Um, if you actually like cared to like try to justify your claims at all, and you went back in time on my channel, you would see that I have painted models from plenty of third-party companies and even made a battle report of a totally dead and obscure game. Uh, this is not my first rodeo with uh, indie games. Maybe you're salty as f bro. Also, are you really like angry that people are going to like spotlight some small brands? The games I love must remain hidden and only for me. That was a decent amount. You know, I, I keep all of the old comments as well. So I have like comments from 2020, it's like the last four years. And if I'm ever feeling too good about myself, giving these a read, does the trick. Ah, uh, okay, now everyone can click off the video. Time for the boring part. I asked on my YouTube community if you guys had any questions for me and I'm gonna answer some of those now. What hobby skill do you feel was least worth learning? I feel like two brush blending is needlessly complex. Now I say that as someone who hasn't really learned how to do that, but with a pretty decent arsenal of skills that I know about painting, I can't see how the complexity of getting that to work would replace anything that I know how to do for like the sake of efficiency. If no one knows what that is, you have two brushes in your hand. One is for blending, one is for applying the paint. And basically what it allows you to do is skip the step where you are cleaning your brush out to blend in between two paints to like wet blend or to, to feather a transition. And I just, I mean like the moment you use that one second brush for feathering a blend, you now have to clean it. And so you're just, you're just having to clean two brushes, you're having to hold the second one in a bizarre way and then know how to flip between the two. It just doesn't make sense to me. What's your favorite making a game factoid slash quote of the year? Let me get my book. If you guys don't know, I have been trying to make a game and I'm gonna talk more about that later. I think there's a question asking about it. And in doing that process, I've been reading a lot of books about game design. I've been taking notes about the things that are resonating with me. Oh man, there are so many good ones, honestly. There are so many good ones. Normally when I make these videos, I look through the questions beforehand and I hand pick them. This time I'm kind of just going through them willy-nilly. There are too many good ideas, but here is a great one from the Board Game Design Advice book. This book is a collection of really prolific board game designers all answering the same question. This question was answered by James Ernest. And he said that art is a conversation between the artist and the user. Pandering to any intermediary diminishes the value of the work. And of course, he's talking about publishing companies and anything that's, that's in the way. And, and that's honestly true for way more than just board games. It's true for, for YouTube videos and for any kind of creative expression. So that's a really good piece of advice. Or uh, I guess a warning rather. I've always wondered what got you into doing the metal growl? Were you ever in a band? No, I was never, I was never in a band other than like in some crappy high school one for like, I don't know, three months. The voice just comes from listening to death metal all the time, doing it in the car, doing it in the shower, cause it's just fun, it's just fun to shout really. What's something in 2024 you're most energized slash excited for? I am very excited to do YouTube not under the pressure and weight of fulfilling a Kickstarter campaign. That's what I'm very excited for. I'm very excited just to be a regular YouTuber again. What kind of advice would you give to an aspiring content creator who wants to focus on our hobby? I think it's incredibly important for you to make sure you are approaching the idea uniquely. And the way you can do that is by being a student of the platform. You observe other videos, their content styles, their deliveries, their subject matters, and you're probably gonna have issues with all of those things. Like you're like, like you know, I would've done that differently. You need to take all those things and you need to put that into your channel, you know? Don't bother with copying. Try to change the game in some way. You'll find a unique voice in doing that and people will attach to that. They'll, they'll attach to your personality. You don't wanna copy ML's style or, or John's style or anyone else's style because then you're gonna get viewers that like them. 
And when, when you deviate from someone else's like ideas and content style, you're gonna lose those people. So just stay true to yourself from the beginning. This is a really interesting question. My question is how can I learn to have a more informed conversation about miniature painting? I don't really know how you can learn to have a more informed conversation. I think this question is coming from the perspective of trying to answer questions about things that you painted. And there are several approaches that you can take to answering that question. You can talk about technique. You can talk about things you tried and were successful at, things you tried and, and failed at. Talk about small issues that you can see that no one else can see. You can talk about why you picked the model you picked, why it satisfies something about like the composition or like the emotion you're trying to suggest with like your little diorama or whatever it is. I don't know if a way you can learn to talk about this, but I guess one way is you could go to shows and conventions and listen to others by, by I talk about their models and stuff like that, or, or videos. Maybe videos would help hear how people talk about their their artistic pieces. Your production is better and better in quality, but is it not less motivating when you work harder on videos? For me, <laughs> the second part is possibly you can hear the ventilation noise of the studio on every recording. I don't know how you can. <laughs> I have done so much to improve the ventilation sound, uh, especially using uh, a noise removal software and a high pass filter. The only way that I can hear the noise in the render is if I turn the video up to an uncomfortably loud volume. Maybe it's just me, like, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe everyone else can hear it super easily. I don't, I guess I assume not because I don't hear it very often, but I'd love to hear if the majority of you can hear the noise when you're listening on a regular volume. Because if you can, obviously I wanna solve that. It is not less motivating, it is more motivating um, it's stressful though, because YouTube uh, is a pretty agile workplace. You need to make stuff fast. And for me, making videos is a hobby, just like painting models is a hobby. And so it never feels good to rest on your laurels and just kind of like go through the motions. Like I always want to be trying new things, using new equipment, trying different formats. Um, and it's unfortunate because I can never like really get into a rhythm, like uh, like make my process super efficient. Cause I'm always kind of just changing things out here and there. Not huge things, just small things, ways that I write, ways that I intro a video, just stuff like that. And that's fun. It's fun to do that and keep it interesting. It's actually so mind numbing to uh, make a regular paint painting video where I like, you know, sit down, have all the painting footage, do all this, the same thing over and over again. Uh, don't worry, I'm still gonna make videos like that. I just do them and I just change up the the, the format a little bit and it makes it a lot easier for, for me to uh, get through the process. What was your focus in engineering and how does that mode of thinking influence your hobbying or channel? Uh, I was a software engineer. Uh, I was actually a computer engineer is what my degree is in, which is like a hybrid between electrical engineering and, and uh, computer science. And I feel like my brain is very analytical and likes to have a process for everything and likes to turn everything into a mathematical formula. Um, and I can definitely see that in my painting and how I try to explain my painting um, and stuff like that. Us car people want to know more about your old Honda. <laughs> You've mentioned it a few times on top, but we need more info in why you drive such a gem. My very first car ever was a Dodge Neon. It was a manual car. My dad, uh, as his pastime, likes to uh, race Porsches and watch Porsche races and, and stuff like that. And so I think because he always had a soft spot in his car for manual transmission vehicles. That's the first vehicle he bought me. And then ever since then, I've just I've just stayed with it. I've, I've owned three cars since then, and they've all been kind of beater uh, manual transmission cars. And I just like that. I like the amount of control I have over the vehicle. And also, I just like having things to do, just to fidget with, and having a, a shifter is helpful. Like when I turn my car and I put my turn signal on, I know that when I spin the wheel back around, it will unclick, but I unclick it myself as I'm turning, just because it like gives me things to do. Here's a great question. How have you found expanding your team? Are you looking for more? Honestly, the experience of hiring and working with people was a largely negative experience. Let me just say that I am never looking for pity. If I ever share a thing that sounds sad, I'm not looking for uh, pity or sympathy, which maybe sounds weird, I just want to be honest with you guys so you know where I'm coming from and where I'm operating. I really value coming into the office and just putting my head down and hyper-focusing on a thing. With people in the office constantly, like my, like my wife and my editor and my producer coming in for various things, 
Um, you know, they ask you questions very reasonably. This is not an unreasonable thing. Like my desk is literally right next to my editor's desk. We sit next to each other. And I understand why bosses want to have their own separate office. You need to have that separation so you can continue doing the thing and focusing on your thing and not getting distracted by like small little questions. So that was a, that was a new thing, um, having to learn how to manage people, but also like continue progressing my own stuff, which is largely the YouTube channel. But beyond that, I've actually let go of both of my employees. So it's just me and my wife again. It just wasn't working out um, and it's not, uh, no forever. I'm not going to like not hire anyone for like uh, the rest of my career. Um, but right now I'm taking a step back from that and just, just flying solo again. Guy wants details on my skincare routine. <laughs> yes. Do literally nothing and have rosacea. Have you ever thought about putting on your own mini painting competition or event? Yes, I have. I have a lot of ideas about, or not like a medium amount of ideas about how I think I could make painting competitions a little bit better, or at least maybe a little bit better for what I what I think. But in doing that, I've actually been working with other people on trying to make a competition. Since because I'm so inexperienced in judging and, and stuff like that, I, I've actually come to realize that some of my ideas were actually probably not so great. So now I'm kind of just like, moving forward with this other project that I don't know how much I can talk about where we are working on a competition with a group of people and I'm learning a lot in that experience. Uh, so that's good, but I'm probably not gonna necessarily do my own, but like a small little one online wouldn't be a bad idea. I wouldn't mind doing that. Will you ever explore the grim dark paint style? Yes, I will. I actually have a lovely model that was converted by an incredible artist on Instagram that I've had for the longest time and just have not gotten around to painting. But that was the point of that model, was to paint it in a grim dark style. And I wanted to start with a suitably grim dark subject. And so that one is the one I want to get to and have not forgotten about. How goes the game development? Um, it's going really well. I mean, I, I am really enjoying myself. It's like so much fun. I have read three books, uh, The Board Game Design Advice by Gabe Barrett. A uh, Game Tech by Jeff Engelstein and A Theory of Fun by Raf Koster. I've watched a lot of lectures on the internet and I have read a lot of articles online. And I've also been developing two different games side by side. But like, I realize that I probably don't need to be doing this amount of research that I'm doing, but like, it's just so much fun to like learn. You know, like with miniature painting, I've learned a lot about miniature painting and the, the new discoveries I make are very nuanced and very personal to me. But with a whole new subject, there's just so much stuff right on the surface, just to like hoover up. And I'm just hoovering it all up right now and I'm, I'm freaking loving it. Um, I imagine it's like when you learn any new thing, sculpting, uh, 2D illustration, like whatever it is, um, there's just so much to learn right in the beginning and it's like, it's so much fun because like, I see how the things they're saying in the books impact my experience when I'm playing games. Um, and so it's just like, it's so validating and it's just so much fun to learn a bunch of stuff. So I, I have been working on my dueling game. I have a lot of really fun rules for it that I'm excited to try out, but where I'm at with that game right now, and it hasn't progressed in a little bit, is um, I need to create two actual characters so I can test these ideas out and see which ones are trash and which ones aren't. Um, I've also been working on a, a fantasy miniature volleyball game that was originally supposed to be a, a game jam idea with miscast terrain. But then I realized that the idea was too precious to me to uh, be done in, in 24 hours or, or whatever, a week, whatever that video was supposed to be. Um, and instead I've been just nursing this, this rule set. So if you don't know, I, I play volleyball. I played it in, in high school and I play it now intramurally. Um, and I love, I, love, I love to watch pro volleyball. I watch the, the VNL. It's such a great game. There are so many things about the game that are so nuanced, like beyond the, uh, the rules. But I've discovered that because I understand the motivation of the players more than I do two people dueling and trying to kill each other. Like I don't, I don't know how that works, you know? I've never done it before. Because I know like what the players are trying to do in volleyball, it's a lot easier to write rules for the game. And I have a, I have a full game or a full rule set written for the, the volleyball game. And I have been, uh, I've been testing it out um, by myself. I haven't played it with anyone else yet, but um, testing it by myself, trying things out, it's fun. All right, that was enough talking about game design. 
Miniac, the online painting channel whose tagline is paint more minis, who's only painted about five minis online this year. A little less conversation, a little more action. You know, if I'm being honest, in 2023, uh, I painted more models than I've ever painted before because I finished two large fantasy armies for A Song of Ice and Fire and for Age of Sigmar. So, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I painted a lot. What have you learned before, during, and nearly after your Kickstarter? That is gonna be a video uh, in and of itself all about that experience. Um, if you don't know, right now, or in like a day or two, the last backers from my campaign will start to get their product shipped to them. And this is uh, UK, EU, Australia, China, um, New Zealand, and rest of the world. Uh, the entirety of North America and South America has been done for months. But yeah, that, that's coming to a close. And when that officially ends, uh, then I'll start selling the product that was for that campaign, and I'll make a video about it. Uh, I don't know what to say right now, other than I am never doing it ever again, um, unless I can be the person who makes the product and then hands it off to someone else who then does literally everything else doing the campaign, doing the pledge managing, doing the fulfillment, uh, communicating with manufacturers, like all that shit. I want to do any of that. It's a whole other job and uh, it's hard, you know? It's hard to do that and also do YouTube at the same time because that was already a whole job. That's what I learned is that even after the campaign, you might think that the, the workload reduces, but it doesn't, it's like the same amount. What was your most epic gaming moment of 2023? I can't remember when this happened, but I was playing something with my Greyjoy army, and I was using a unit that has exploding sixes, essentially. It's called Critical Blow. The way that that game is designed is most units are not supposed to be able to one-shot another unit. Like, this is how it's like, like the most damage you're gonna do on an average unit is like six or seven damage, if like you're rolling really well. But my Iron Maker unit, popped off and I rolled like five sixes and obliterated a unit in one swing, which like, again, it never happens. So it's freaking epic. Wondering how you, you're you personally feeling about the new approach you've been taking uh, for the channel in 2024. Cutting the gaming streams, upping the video sketch, refocusing videos and titles. Um, it seems like you were following your passions in 2023 at the expense of what's traditionally successful on YouTube. Are you disappointed, eager to try a new approach? Just curious. So yeah, I, I am cutting the gaming streams. It's just a ton of effort uh, for uh, not much gain. And that really isn't why I am cutting it. It was just a lot of stress. There was a lot of stress having to like drive home on Thursdays, eat dinner quickly, drive back, set up all the gaming stream stuff or set it up earlier in the day and have it cut into my my work schedule or like I need to, like even the painting stream, it's like I need to finish a video like today. It's like, oh, but I have a painting stream at 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's like, you know, it kind of gets in the way sometimes. So I think one huge lesson I learned this year, and I feel like I've already learned it, but I had to relearn it, I guess, was that if YouTube got me to where I am right now, in this office, with employees. If I ever invest into the company, it should be into things that make me make more YouTube videos. When there truly is an excess of cash or of time, then I can do other weird, fun things, like a gaming stream, right? And that, that, then I truly don't care about like the number of people watching it and like if it's worth the investment. You know, I honestly feel kind of stupid because like the editor that I hired who is now no, no longer working for me, like their entire time, 99% of their time was spent editing the podcast, which was, you know, that, that's a joint effort between John and I. It's not my project exclusively. And also editing my masterclass courses. He touched like four YouTube videos and what he did was uh, assistant editing work. He did that on like five or six videos, um, and that was it. My first thing, if I should, if I hired an editor, would have been, you are going to learn how I make videos so that I can make, you know, seventy percent more content. You know, I'm still going to be the host of the videos, but if someone could like edit the video entirely, I, I can't even explain to you guys how much time that would save me. It'd be insane. Um, so I think I think refocusing on miniature painting. And in YouTube as well is gonna do is gonna do well for my channel. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I do want to make more videos. I think if I could pump out three videos 
uh, a month instead of the one in 1.75 I'm able to do, that would be really good. What turns you on more, the smell of pages of a fresh codex slash hobby book or licking the paint of your brush? I'll go first. I smash my nose into a new book every chance I get. <laughs> You know, it's hard to beat the smell of a fresh book, too. When that, that crackling sound where the spine has never been open before and it makes that, that slight little crack. Woo, baby! Can you give some more deets on your camera setup? Rocking a GH6 right now. Love that camera. It solved all my problems that I had with the previous line. Uh, and I'm using a 12 to 35 f28 lens. I've used this lens forever, and it's the ultimate painting lens. It does everything I want it to do. I could, I could never want anything more. How you rig it up doesn't matter. The fact that it's in the ceiling is very convenient, but yeah, that's the, that's the camera. Oh, also, don't use battery, use constant power, because that's just annoying. You can trade two projects you finished this year to finish one project you either wanted to do uh, but didn't, or a project you started but couldn't finish. What's the trade? That's a fun question. I think I would actually trade the two videos that came out back to back. We discovered the secret to finishing our Warhammer armies and painting pros teach me how to finish my army. The Star Wars one was just like a dedicated sponsorship where I had to make the video about the book. And so it kind of just felt a little ham-fisted. Um, and then the second one was, you know, that you know, pe people asked for that video, they wanted to hear a retrospective after the campaign, but that's not kind of video that I would make. And I would instead replace those two with uh, this video I've wanted to make forever, um, where there is no narration, it's just music, tons of beautiful painting footage, um, and it's me repainting one of my old Lord of the Rings figures. Freaking Imhotep's asking a question. What inspired you to start your channel slash brand? What inspires you to keep going? What inspired me was the opportunity. I knew how to use a camera and make videos, and I loved YouTube, and I kind of knew how YouTube kind of worked back in 2016. Initially, it started as a way to help encourage me to finish a commission that I just was struggling with. But then when it kept getting better and better, I was like, oh, okay, maybe I can, maybe I can actually do this. If I'm being totally honest with you guys, I, I knew I could do it. Whether or not it was actually going to result in success, that's something else altogether. But in my head, I was like, I got this. Like, nothing is stopping me from, from accomplishing this. And it, and, it, and it worked out. What inspires me to keep going? At the moment, it's trying to crack the code of how do I make a YouTube video in a way that I like it? Because YouTube sells you this dream that you can like, you can, you can make this a living, you can do whatever you want. And I really want to believe that. I really want to believe that you can make, you can, you can do what you want on YouTube, but maybe you have to kind of just follow a couple of rules or find a certain audience. And I, and I really want to just learn that, you know? Uh, it, it's, like a, it's like an unsolvable question, and my brain loves to chew on that. And so every video I put out, I like really think a lot about how it's performing, why it's performing the way it is, um, what I could do better next time, why I did good this time. I love thinking about that, it's just a lot of fun. You have to consume an entire bathtub's worth of paint water or spend three months assembling and pinning metal skeleton bones individually for at least two hours a day. This isn't a question you have to choose. If I could drink the paint water over the course of like six months, I think I would do that. <laughs> Your three favorite bands are playing a show. Who are you seeing? I would say based on what I'm listening to right now on Spotify, it would be, Alan Stone, which is a funk artist. Silent Planet, which is like a melodic, like kind of sing-songy death metal band. I recently saw Death Angel live in concert with my buddy, and that was such an amazing experience. I haven't been to a metal concert in a long time, and that was so much fun. Uh, so I'll pick an old thrash metal, or I'll pick an old metal band from my past and say Morbid Saint. Like, that band crushes. I don't like like bad sounding music, like a lot of black metal and a lot of like demos of death metal bands just sound bad, like they're produced poorly. And the only Morbid Saint album that exists isn't like the best sounding album, but for some reason, I freaking love it. I don't know why, it just really works with the kind of music they're making. Do you guys plan on having children? Uh, no, at the moment we don't. We're happy with our two dogs and life seems like enough of a handful without having to take care of a child at the moment. But you know, maybe it'll change. Who's the tallest mini YouTuber? Online, you're all the same height. I don't think anyone's 
beating guy. Also, it's everyone thinks I'm short. I'm I'm six foot one. Um, and I think Guy's like six foot three or something. He's freaking tall, dude. Is your game setting low fantasy? No, definitely high, higher fantasy. Definitely like magic and, and elves and stuff like that for sure, dude. Who is your favorite YouTuber hobbyist? I freaking love that question. I think at the moment it's Jay and Nick from Eons of Battle. Um, I don't watch like all their videos because they just make such an amazing amount of videos. But the videos where Jay is hobbying, they're just great. They're like, they're awesome. Like they're they're short and sweet and to the point and he just does a thing and it's done. Um, it's they're, they're awesome, I love them. What video games have I been playing? Um, I am still so much about Star Wars right now. And so I uh, this year I played and beat Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, which Jedi Survivor was a really good game. I really enjoyed playing that game. I played a little bit of Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, and I played uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. <laughs> There's a lot of Star Wars games. I played a lot of Played Up with my wife and another uh, couple. Is 2024 the year you make a serious attempt at a competition piece again? What have you learned to stop doing in 2023? What did you learn to do more of? Um, I'll answer both of those questions. I have learned to stop saying no to my own ideas and start saying no to other people's ideas. And actually someone asked about YouTube channels earlier, and this is a great, great piece of advice. People will ask you all the time to make content about their product. And there is nothing wrong with that. Literally nothing wrong with that. But I've discovered that if that becomes the entirety of your channel, it like it's really hard to make a really crafted video if you have this limitation of a thing you have to incorporate in the video, right? You have ideas for really cool and fun ideas, and it feels kludgy to rope in other people's stuff for the sake of advertising and, 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 and things like that. So I wanna say no less than my fun ideas and, and do them and say no more to people, which is like really hard. Like I want everyone to like rely on me and I wanna be everyone's guy and I wanna make everyone happy and be able to provide like my channel as a service to like these small companies and and other companies. But it's just like, I don't know, it, it's hard. It's hard when I make so few videos to, to limit my channel so much to other people's stuff. Speaking of that, painting competitions at the moment are just not something that I'm truly interested in. I'm, I'm not interested in that grind, you know, that really exhausting painting grind where you you paint it and eight times out of 10, it ends in, you know, you, you not winning, which obviously the journey is more the reward than the actual award itself. But is it really an award? Like that, uh, that amount of crunchy painting is like really exhausting. And in the past, it's like made me take breaks from the hobby. And right now I'm just chasing what's fun, which is like, you know, painting one-off models, painting models for games. Um, and it's really working out for me. You know, I'm really having a lot a lot of joy. I'm definitely gonna paint another model for competition at some point, but right now in my current phase, that's just not how I'm feeling. But you know, I reserve the right to change that opinion. And the last question, perfect. We can end on this. Have you ever thought about quitting YouTube? Yes. 2023 was a year and a half. Uh, in a lot of ways, I felt like it was Miniac rock bottom. And it wasn't because my videos weren't performing well. Actually, there were many videos this year that performed uh, like kind of in, in that in a really good, healthy way. It's actually like if you look at like this this year compared to last year, on average, I think my videos got higher view count. I actually haven't, haven't looked that up, but uh, it feels that way. It's just been really, it's been a really rough year, like uh, behind the scenes um, with the employees, with the Kickstarter fulfillment with just a lot of noise outside of the channel. And like I, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was tough. This is so cliche, but I really feel this way. When I say it's rock bottom, I mean that in an incredibly positive way, which is to say that I am going to shed a lot of baggage and weight. Um, and I'm not just referring to like employees and stuff like that, but a lot more than just that. Um, and just like do what was so fun for me uh, in the beginning, which is just like being a YouTuber. Um, and I'm, I'm really encouraged by that and looking forward to that. That was the video, guys. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for asking questions. Thanks for being around. I thought that there was gonna be a few snarky questions in there and there really wasn't, you know? So like, thank you so much for like being understanding and, 
and just great people. You know, we, I can't do this alone. I can't have an office space and, and hire employees for a full year by myself. Like, I need you guys. And I'm really appreciative of, of everything, of the subscribers on Twitch, of the viewers on YouTube, of the likers, of the commenters, of the people that send me emails uh, that I'm not able to respond to all the time, about the models they paint, and about the ways that my channel like helped them out, about the people that approach me at conventions, and, and, and you know the, the soldiers that tell me that my videos help them with their PTSD. It's incredible. It's an incredible experience um, being a YouTuber. It's a challenging experience, but it's also an incredible one, being able to to make content and have it resonate. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to 2024 and like for many reasons. If I can actually accomplish what I think I can accomplish, it should be a really good and fruitful year for the channel, which seems weird because it's starting off with a culling, but um, I think it's I think it's for the best. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you for being involved in the Miniac channel in whatever capacity you are involved in for this year. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. If you like the channel and you wanna support it, some of the best ways to do that right now are checking out some of the merch on my miniac.co store. One of these awesome cutting mats, double-sided with an imperial grid on one side and a metric grid on the other. Two different funky designs. Or this awesome hoodie, black and red tie-dye with a nice little bat patch right there and a sick giant design on the back. That's a great way. When those wood elves come out, when that brush box comes out on the web store, which will hopefully be, hopefully in February. But yeah, guys, you've done a lot of supporting of me this year. Uh, so I'll, I'll, cut it, I'll cut it a little bit short. Uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for how you were involved in my channel this year. And here's to uh, 2024 and another year of me YouTubing. That'll be it, guys. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to pay more matter.